once you have obtained your learner's permit, then you can have the opportunity to practice. Once you begin to feel more comfortable with the practices and have more control over your vehicle, in other words, you're able to make turns, park, go in reverse, and keep it straight in its lane, as well as knowledge on traffic lights and signs, then, and only then, we must proceed with the practice driving exam, also known as the road test, in order to obtain our driver's license. For this practical driving exam, you should have a vehicle with a valid plate number and insurance. The vehicle will be inspected to make sure that it's appropriate and safe for the exam. If you choose the option to visit a driving school authorized to do the practical examination, then these schools will already most likely provide you with the vehicle that you will be using for your road test. Okay, so now let's go to the important stuff. When it's your turn to perform this practical exam, the examiner will go with you to the vehicle, but first he will inspect your vehicle. He or she will check the signaling lights, front lights, as well as the back lights, just to make sure they are working properly. They're going to check the steering wheel, the mirrors, and the brakes and you will simply just follow their instructions. This is very important for you to do. When it's time for you to get in position to begin, always remember the adjustments that you need to make, such as adjusting your driver's seat, as shown in other videos. Don't forget the seat belt, which is very important. Adjust it by placing it over your shoulder and making sure, like seen in the video, that it's appropriately placed right next to you by your hip. Soon after, the examiner will take their seat right next to you and will begin to give you instructions on what to do next. First thing they'll ask is for you to reverse and get out of the parking space. Reminder that you must proceed with this task taking all the correct and appropriate measures to be successful. First thing is to position yourself to reverse as previously explained in other videos, which means place the arm behind the passenger seat while the other one is on the steering wheel. Now look back behind you and around you, slowly backing up. I may have videos, many videos on how to reverse out of a parking space that you can definitely check out in my channel if you want more details and step by step. Because it's very important that you know how to reverse out of a parking space before their practical examination. Once again, if you have any doubts, make sure to check my channel where you will find a lot of full length video that actually tell you step by step how to reverse out of a parking space that might help you a lot. Once you have managed to get out of the parking space, you will notice you will most likely be on a two-way street. So you must make sure to remain on the right side of the street. Remember, if you drive on the middle of the lane or on the left lane, you will be automatically disqualified. Please pay close attention to the road, the streets, and the direction that you are driving or heading. Soon after, you will find yourself approaching a stop sign. One of the things that the examiner want to see from you is your ability to make firm stops and also to acknowledge traffic signs. Always, always, always make firm stops behind the white line and never ever Try to have a better visibility and pass the white line in the process. Always stop firmly behind the line and count mentally till five while looking at your surroundings and then you may proceed. Reminder, every single time the examiner asks you to turn, you must always turn on your signaling lights before turning. Every time you forget to turn your signaling lights, when changing lanes, turning, or parking, you will lose points. 
in this exam. So be very mindful of these signaling lights because they are very, very important. Throughout this route that you will be doing, you will have to demonstrate your basic driving abilities. Now, we will talk about one of these driving abilities. We will talk about the three-point turn. So what is exactly a three-point turn? Well, three-point is your ability to turn around in a two-way street. So the first thing that you will hear from the examiner is for you to stop and show your ability to turn around in three points. First thing you will do is maintain your vehicle stopped firm with foot on brakes. There's many drivers that move forward towards the edge of the sidewalk border to have more space to move, which you can do, but is not necessary. Stay where you are and place your turning signal to the left. Remember what I said about turning signal? This is very, very important for you to do. So place that turning signal on before doing anything else. You're going to check that there isn't any incoming traffic and then you will turn all the way to the left your steering wheel. All this without moving. Then you will start moving slowly to the left side towards the other side of the road. It's very important that your wheels never ever pass or leave the pavement. Once you're on the edge of the street or sidewalk on your left, you will stop. Then move your steering wheel completely to your right. This time, again, you're not moving here. You will then change your gear to R, reverse, get into the reverse position, looking over your shoulder and slowly start backing up. You will keep backing up slowly until you have reached the edge of the sidewalk or end of the street, once again without leaving the pavement. Now you will begin turning your steering wheel again, but completely to your left this time. Switch your gear to D, drive and proceed slowly until you're completely on your right lane. I insist that each one of you, after doing a driving maneuver, such as turning, getting out of a parking space, or three point, you should always go for the right lane. So once you finish the three points, you will continue driving, following the examiner's instructions. So drive on your right side and be very attentive to all the traffic signs, especially the stop signs guys this is very important and something that you should always keep in mind throughout your entire route of the road test next thing that your examiner will have you accomplish is the reverse so your examiner will out of nowhere tell you hey stop and proceed doing a reverse they want to see if you have full control and that you know the correct techniques to accomplish this reverse you'll have to stop firmly the vehicle and get into the reversing position. So many of you keep leaving in the comments that it's enough and okay to simply look through the windows, the mirrors, and no guys, it is not enough. You will have to get into this position, which is the appropriate way to reverse, at least for your practical examination, or you will be disqualified. You need to move and put your arm over the passenger seat and look behind your, sh your shoulder and the lateral mirrors as well as the rear view mirror, then slowly and gently reverse. You'll be demonstrating to the examiner that you are very careful and attentive to all your surroundings. Maintain your steering wheel firm and straight, placing your hand on the 12 o'clock position as you reverse. The idea is that you are able to maintain your vehicle in your lane as you reverse for the next 50 feet. You will do this until the examiner tells you stop. Make sure you practice reversing a lot in your driving classes prior to the road test to make it much easier and smooth for you. You can't show up to the practical exam without knowing how to do this because if you get out of your lane at any point, you will be disqualified. So another important ability that you will have to demonstrate throughout your road test is accelerate your vehicle and stop suddenly. The examiner wants to see your ability to move your feet from one pedal to the other, from the accelerator to the brakes and vice versa. So the examiner is going to ask you to suddenly stop and then accelerate fast. 
When doing this, make sure to keep your hands and arms relaxed and don't hold a tight grip on your steering wheel. Just relax when performing this task. Again, this is something that you will need to practice during your driving classes to get comfortable with it. So the next thing that you will be asked to show is your ability to park your vehicle successfully among cones. So the cones will be placed like this next to the parking lines on the pavement as shown here. The idea is for you to be able to park your vehicle between these cones without knocking or hitting the cones and that your vehicle ends up parked correctly. There's a technique for parking that is very helpful for parking. You can find that video tutorial step by step again in my channel. This technique is very useful for you to be able to correctly and easily park your vehicle successfully. So when given the instruction to park, first thing that you will do is turn your signaling light on immediately. You will then slowly proceed on the right lane until your front tire or mirror is aligned with the first two cones. I repeat, you will slowly proceed on the right lane until your front tire or mirror is aligned with the first two cones. So you can have a better understanding. I will show you here in the video the angle and how it's supposed to look like. And hopefully you will get a better understanding as to where you're supposed to stop and make it easier for you. You will stop there. Then turn your steering wheel completely to the left until it stops. You will then let go of the brakes really gently and slowly. Your vehicle will slowly proceed to move into the parking space very, very gently. Remember, do not put your feet, your foot on the accelerator at any point. Just keep going slowly and as gentle as you possibly can. Once you're there, you will then stop and put your gear on P parked. Now, once you did all of that and your car is parked, then the examiner will probably ask you the following questions, such as if you're going to park on a hill, hop uphill or downhill, how would you do it? Remember, if you are parked on an uphill or a downhill, the first thing that you will do is Put your emergency gear on. Then you will turn your steering wheels towards the right. And I mean your wheels towards right or towards the left. Then you will change your gear to P park and then turn off your vehicle. It has to be in this order. One, put the emergency brakes on. That's always a must. And two, turn on your steering wheel or the wheels of your car to the right or to the left and put your gear on parking and three, turn off your car. And all right, so after this, what's next? Well, next up, you will be asked to leave the parking space or get out of the parking space. So reversing out of a parking spot with cones will be basically the same thing you did in the beginning of the practical road test when you were getting out of the parking space among other vehicles. You will correctly reverse out of your space and then drive towards the direction that your examiner instructs you to do so or wants you to do so. I repeat, I always maintain myself or yourself in this case on the right lane if required. Finally, you will come back to the original parking space that you started off once again and you will be asked again to park your vehicle among the cars this time. So. Once you accomplish this, you will be all done with the road test. And you, this part you should be able to do very um, easily if you mastered the previous skill uh, task that we spoke of earlier, which was parking among cones. So once you're parked already in this space, you will be all done with your road test. Reminder to always listen to the examiner and their instructions Never try to go ahead and do anything without being asked to do so. Don't even talk to them. Just stay quiet, remain calm, and answer when needed and do as told. So a lot of you have asked me that if in the state of Florida, you are asked to park your vehicle parallel 
In this case, in the state of Florida, the answer is no. They will not and they do not ask you to do parallel parking on the road test. However, there's other states that do require and ask for you to do a parallel parking. But here's a quick demonstration for those who are in another state and do have this as a requirement for their road test. Now, I do advise those uh, who are in another state to actually go figure this out if it's a requirement or not for your state. Now, if you do have this requirement, I invite you to check out this channel, Driving TV, because I definitely do have video tutorials for parallel parking that teaches you the techniques needed to successfully achieve this maneuver. Now, make sure and remember that all we discussed and went through in this video must be practiced. You need it. Make sure to practice everything that was shown here so you have a better understanding and you're more prepared and calm when the day of the road test comes. And with that being said, guys, I will see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe and do not forget to leave your comments because it's always appreciated. Thank you and best of luck to you guys.